Today we're going to talk about anxiety. What is it? And what you can do about it. I'm Paul Makovich. I'm a clinical psychologist practicing in New York City. And I'm Dora Kurme, a mental performance coach, and I'm also based in New York City. I've treated a lot of patients suffering from anxiety, but what is anxiety exactly? In order to answer this question, you first have to have an understanding of what emotions are, generally speaking. What's the theory behind emotions? So emotions are made up of two parts. The first is a feeling state, either positive or negative. And the second is ideas. Now the two are always linked. You can't have one without the other. Now let's move on to anxiety. Anxiety is a negative feeling state and the ideas associated with anxiety are about danger in the future. Something bad is going to happen. Now here's where it gets tricky. Sometimes the ideas might be hidden from awareness. They might be buried. So you're feeling anxious and you don't really know why. So it's important to differentiate debilitative and facilitative anxiety. Facilitative anxiety has a positive effect. For example, when an athlete is facing the heat of the competition, the athlete is really looking forward to the event. So basically there is a stimulus and the, if the athlete feels the control and have the confidence and uh, thinks that they can cope with the situation, it's going to be positive. So it's called facilitative anxiety and it's also called the high road. So it really depends on the interpretation, but also debilitative anxiety when, for example, an athlete thinks that they can't deal with the pressure and basically they are choking and underperforming. That's really on the low road. So it really depends on the interpretation and anxiety can be positive, how I said. So sometimes anxiety can be adaptive. It can actually be working for you. For example, suppose you're, again, an athlete getting ready for a competition. You might need the nervous system a little bit primed in order to be at an optimal aroused state to get that adrenaline flowing. Another example, you might be, uh, let's take the example of a college student preparing for an examination. So the danger, the idea about danger in the future, failing the exam, doing poorly on the exam, might be a source of motivation. So you're going to start studying more. The first step is awareness. Many people are not even aware that they are having anxiety. What are the symptoms of anxiety? So when anxiety is maladaptive, it's working against you and you're going to experience symptoms you don't want, such as rapid heart rate, difficulty concentrating, difficulty sleeping, muscle tension. Um, you might feel like you're nauseous or you have butterflies in your stomach. Now when these symptoms um, are really exaggerated, it can create a panic attack where you, you get overwhelmed by anxiety. What are the interventions to treat anxiety? So interventions to help with anxiety fall into two categories, supportive and insight oriented. Supportive interventions include what Dora does, performance coaching, or cognitive behavioral therapy, other behavioral therapies, medications, self-help books, YouTube videos. Insight-oriented interventions would be psychoanalysis or psychoanalytic psychotherapy. Now, what's the difference between the two? In the case of the first, you're trying to manage the anxiety. In the case of the second, you're trying to get to the bottom of the anxiety and unravel it, figure out what the ideas are that are hidden. So the first might be more practical, it's quicker. You may not need the longer, more intensive therapy. Now, if you do an insight treatment, it's gonna be a more involved process, but you're more likely to see results and get the anxiety completely eliminated or to a much more manageable level. What could an athlete do before or during a competition? 
So everyone has an optimal energy level and the athlete has to find this optimal energy level and adjust his or her energy level that they could perform their best for that day. So how can they do that? It's really important always to focus on what you can control. Many athletes focusing on uh, what they cannot control. An athlete can't control who are they going to play against and also how is the Open going to play at the match. So they always have to focus on what they can control, such as they can control their pre-performance routines and also in-game rituals. Pre-performance routines are uh, controlled behaviors and thoughts right before the tournament uh, happens. It can be right before the match as well. And examples for pre-performance routines are imagery, uh, using positive affirmations, listening to music, and using breathing techniques. So I will cover these techniques because you can use this not just right before your uh, tournament or your matches but also during your games as rituals as well. So using positive affirmations are crucial because it really helps you to adjust your energy level and increase your confidence uh, level and also concentration. So positive affirmations means that you, are, you have to be your best friend when you compete and every thoughts in your head and also whatever you say out loud um, are called self-talks or affirmations. And it's important that these affirmations, they have to be positive because it's affecting your performance. So you don't want to say yourself that I don't want to screw up or um, I, I don't want to make um, any mistakes or I don't want to miss my serve. You always want to focus on what you can control. Uh, so here is a handout that we are showing that what, how you can create your positive affirmations. And it's also important to be aware when you are having negative self-talk. So you have to know the situations when you usually have these negative self-talk and you can rather change them and reframe these affirmations to positive ones. The other technique that you can use is basically you can focus on your breathing because your breathing is really affecting also your energy level and uh, focusing on your breathing can release the tension. I'm sure many of you experience that when you are nervous, you forget to exhale. So circle breathing is a great technique. You have to uh, inhale through your nose and exhale through your mouth. And this is called circle breathing. And whenever you play in a match, this is a great technique because it's a very quick technique, but also it's helping to release the tension in your body because it gives much more oxygen in your blood if you are doing properly the exhalation. And the exhalation has to be longer when you do that. And doing like six, seven circle breathing techniques are very powerful during your competition. It's also really important to be in the moment and play point by point regardless from the previous point. So you need a right now focus and whenever you realize that you are not in the moment because you are in the future thinking about winning or losing or you're in the past, you're thinking still about what mis mistakes you have done, you can bring back your attention and refocus. And how you can do that, you can just focus in on your breathing and also use your positive affirmation that I just talked about. And another important fact is that every day is different. So your goal is to do your best for that day, whatever it is. 
It might be not your best performance overall, but your best for that day. So Dora, as a sponsored coach, do you have a few techniques you'd like to share with us? Absolutely. You always have to focus on what you can control. And um, having a serve ritual is really important to able to handle stress well. Examples for that, how many times you bounce the ball on the floor, on the table, or on your paddle right before you serve. It's very important and it's very uh, relaxing. And also focusing on your breathing, it's also important. I talked about circle breathing and um, it's a great technique. And using the positive affirmation that I also talked about, uh, such as, come on, go for your shots right before you serve, it's really uh, helpful. And I would add one more thing, which is crucial, is basically the movement part between the points because moving around really helps to release the tension. And movement can be bouncing on your feet and also shaking your legs and arms. So Dora, I've noticed when you're playing in a competition, you often have a smile on your face regardless of how you're doing in the match. Can you say more about that? Yes, actually this is my coping technique. Uh, one of my coping techniques. I really like to smile when I'm having a, a difficult time or if I'm in a challenging uh, situation um, on and off the table. <laughs>